Six Sigma is a set of tools and techniques that have helped several companies around the world achieve business success. Hi guys, I'm Raul from Simply Learn and let's get started with our introduction to Six Sigma. Now let's understand this better with an example. Here let's talk about how things were before Six Sigma was introduced. Here Jenny and James are having a conversation with each other. Jenny is James's manager and she's not happy at all. She says James is in a lot of trouble. This is because she found out that the customers weren't happy with the organization's service and the operational costs were way too high. And as manager, James had to make sure that this did not happen. Now let's have a look at the same scenario in present day. Here we have Jenny congratulating James. She's very impressed with his work. But James says it's all thanks to Six Sigma methodology. So Jenny asks, she wants to know more about Six Sigma. So to understand Six Sigma, here's what you need to know. Firstly, we'll have to understand what is Six Sigma, what its advantages are, some of its methodologies, what are the different roles in a Six Sigma team, what is lean, what is a lean process, and what is lean Six Sigma. So now let's get started with understanding what exactly is Six Sigma. The Six Sigma methodology makes sure to find as well as eliminate any sort of defect or variation that could be affecting your product, service or process. Now this methodology is statistics based, is data driven and focused on continuous improvement. Now this means that there's no end goal in the horizon. There's always another goal to reach. There are three core ideologies behind Six Sigma. The first one states that for any business to be successful, there's continuous efforts that are required so that you can achieve stable as well as predictable process results. The second ideology states that in any business or manufacturing process, there are certain characteristics that can be defined, measured, analyzed and controlled. The final ideology says that along with the rest of the organization, the top level management plays a very important role to making sure that there's sustained quality. Now let's talk about the advantages of Six Sigma. Six Sigma can help produce a roadmap or a path through which you can easily find and reduce any sort of organizational risk and reduce the operational costs. Another advantage is that it helps improve the efficiency of the process and making sure that it works in a timely manner. It decreases defects, improves the overall tracking and monitoring process and ensures that the products are aligned with the company's policies. It is also reported that it greatly helps improve customer as well as vendor satisfaction. It helps improve the cash flow and ensures that the products are complying with the regulations of the organization. Now let me tell you about the process of Six Sigma. Now Six Sigma projects are of basically two methodologies, the DMAIC and the DMADV. Now let's talk about DMAIC in detail. That's short for define, measure, analyze, improve and control. This is one of the most commonly used methodologies in the world. This is commonly used by companies when they have to fix or improve an already existing product or process that does not meet the company's standards. Now let's have a look at the process. First phase is the define phase. In this phase, you define the problem that the customers are facing, you find out where you can improve, and you clearly understand what the customers require of you. The second phase is the measure phase. Now in this phase, you actually identify how well the process is doing in its current unaltered state. In the analyze phase, you process the data that you get from the measure phase and determine what exactly is the cause of the delay or variation. In the improve phase, you start by making small changes to the business process and make sure that the problem you identified earlier is being taken care of. And finally, in the control phase, you control the new process so that it doesn't go wrong and use the same knowledge for future processes. Now, let's have a look at DMADV. This is short for define, measure, analyze, design and verify. Now this is also commonly known as DFSS or the design for Six Sigma. Now this is commonly used by companies around the world when they have a new product that needs to be created all the way from scratch. In the first phase, which is the define phase, you define what the goal of the project is and what the customers require of you. In the measure phase, you measure as well as determine what the customer needs and how they respond to your products. In the analyze phase, you perform analyses to determine how you can improve your product or service so they can better serve your customers. In the design phase, you set up process details and make optimizations to the design to make sure your customer is satisfied. And finally, in the verify phase, you check how well the design is working out and how well it meets the customer's needs. 
Now before we go on, let's talk about how Six Sigma was used in reference to the earlier example, the situation that James was facing. A survey conducted by the organization James was working for indicated that the customers weren't very happy with the organization. So they decided to fix that with the help of Six Sigma. So they decided that the DMAIC methodology would be best suited to solve their problem. So let's have a look at what they did. Firstly, in the define phase, they used a tool called the voice of the customer. This tool represented the needs as well as requirements of the customer. This showed that the customers expected prompt delivery, the correct product selection and a knowledgeable distribution team from the company. And now on to the measure phase. The company wanted to know why the customers didn't like them. So they performed some data collection. From there, they found out that they took 56% longer than other companies to deliver their product. So they decided to reduce the amount of time it takes between order entry and the delivery of the product. And now in the analyze phase. Here they knew what the issue was, but they wanted to know what exactly made their product's delivery so slow. Why were the customers receiving the product so late? Then they performed some analysis. Their analysis showed the possible causes. It could have been inaccurate sales plans, issues with their safety stock, issues with their vendor's delivery performance and falling behind on the manufacturing schedule. Further analysis also indicated that most of their sales, almost 80%, came from 30% of their products. The issue was that they didn't have enough safety stock to satisfy the customers who required that 30% of products. And now onto the improve phase. So now that they knew what was causing their problem, they wanted to solve it. They began to have monthly reviews and tried to make sure that their in-demand products stayed in demand. Another thing that they wanted to focus on was to make sure that they could order and provide the customer with the products that they wanted. And finally, onto the control phase. They began to set up plans so that they could monitor the sales of that 30% of products that were selling the most. Each year, they would review how well a product was selling and replace it if it had fallen out of favor. Now, let me tell you what a Six Sigma team consists of. Let's talk about the roles in a Six Sigma team. First up is level 7. Now, these are individuals who are at the novice level. Now, these individuals don't know in great detail about what the project is, but they have a basic understanding of the principles and the methodology behind the program. Now, they usually support with smaller projects and with smaller issues, but these individuals found the foundation for the people who decide where the program is going. And now we're at level six. Now, these are individuals who have a yellow belt certification. Now, they are core members of the Six Sigma team who have an understanding of how the basic metrics work and how they can perform some sort of improvement. Now, they have their own areas of expertise and they're required to determine certain processes that need to improve. At the same time, they're also in charge of smaller improvement projects. Now, level five. These are people who have a green belt certification. Now, these individuals are usually part-time professionals who have a number of different duties to fulfill. They focus on smaller Six Sigma projects. They're usually involved with gathering data, performing some sort of experiment and analyzing information. They also assist with black belt projects. And now we're at level four. These are individuals who have a black belt certification. They're usually team leaders of a Six Sigma project. They complete four to six projects a year and are experts in the principles, methodologies and lean concepts. Thanks to their understanding of statistical experimental design, they can also understand the hidden reasons behind why a particular product failed. And now we're at level three. These are individuals who have a master black belt certification. Now these are individuals who are experts when it comes to resources, the practices and the methodologies that are employed in Six Sigma. Their main emphasis is to coach, train and certify black belts. They also are involved with other Six Sigma leaders to ensure a company's goals are met. Now level two. These individuals are called champions. So they work really closely with the executives and usually have a role like a senior or a middle executive level role. They also have a clear understanding of what exactly is the company's vision and mission. They also understand metrics so that they can set up a Six Sigma project that lines up with the company's goals. They're responsible for removing any sort of roadblock that could hamper the success of a project. And finally, we're at level one. These are the executives. Now, these individuals represent the highest level when it comes to a Six Sigma team. Now, they have training as well as experience through which they can set up Six Sigma projects that clearly line up with the company's goals. Their main emphasis is to ensure that the project is able to add value to the organization and at the end of the day is successful. Now, this is when Jenny interjects. She wants to know about Lean. John tells her that Lean, just like Six Sigma, is another methodology. So what exactly is Lean? Now Lean is a methodology that has a very important ideology. 
to make sure that there's continuous optimization of the processes and there's an elimination of waste. So what's waste? So waste is basically any part of the process that the customer doesn't want to pay for. It is a process that does not add any value to the customer. Now coming back to Lean, here are some of its characteristics. Whenever decisions are being made in a Lean team, the main emphasis is to understand how it exactly adds value to the customer. Every member in a Lean team has a clear understanding of what exactly are the goals of the organization. It also encourages employees to push for further success even if the organization is in a good place or is already doing well. There's also an emphasis on cross-functional collaboration and communication. Lean focuses on answering the difficult question or the complex ones rather than employing short-term fixes. And with Lean, you can easily prepare for issues that can come up in the future or improvise in unexpected circumstances. So let's talk about how Lean and Six Sigma are different from one another. The Lean methodology aims to reduce waste. It does so by analyzing the workflow. It also emphasizes on minimizing resource usage and improving customer value. Now let's talk about Six Sigma. The aim of Six Sigma is to provide near perfect results. It wants to reduce costs and improve customer satisfaction. Basically, both of them are moving towards the same goal, to reduce the amount of waste and to create efficient processes. Now let's talk about the process of Lean. Now there are five different steps. Let's start with the first one, identifying value. You need to identify value by determining what exactly is the problem you're trying to solve for the customer. The second step is to map your value stream. You need to map the workflow of your company. You need to focus on the different actions and the people that are involved with the process. You need to be able to identify which parts of the process are able to add value and the ones that don't. The third step is to create a flow. You need to break up your work into smaller silos and visualize the workflow so that you can easily identify problems that might show up later. The next step is to establish pull. You need to set up a system through which products are created only when there is a demand or a requirement for it. Through this, you can optimize resource capacity. And finally, we are at the fifth step which is continuous improvement. You need to ensure all your employees at all levels are involved in the continuous improvement of the process. So what exactly is Lean Six Sigma? What if you could combine the best of both worlds? The combination of Six Sigma and Lean methodology led to the creation of Lean Six Sigma. Lean Six Sigma is a methodology that aims to solve problems, removes any form of waste or inefficiency and improving the working conditions of employees to make sure that they can serve the customers better. Now this is a combination of the tools, methods and principles that are employed in Lean and Six Sigma. Let's talk about some of its advantages. It aims to provide customers with a better experience by streamlining the process. With efficient power flows, it aims to drive higher results. It can reduce cost, remove waste and prevent defects. It can help the organization handle day-to-day -day problems. The decreased lead times help increase capacity and profitability. And finally, it helps with people development and improving the morale of the organization. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. I hope you guys found this informative and helpful. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.